Hi guys! Today I thought I'd do a video on containers. You're seeing containers literally everywhere nowadays. There is so many benefits to using containers. Security, saving money, portability, and it's just so important now that more and more containers are being used to offer services to customers or your end users. So it's really important to now know the status of your containers. Are your containers up? How is the hardware utilization, the CPU utilization, the memory utilization on your container? So you really want to keep track of how the system's doing, not just the host, but the container itself. So today I thought I'd do a quick video on how you're able to monitor and keep track of your containers. So I set up two containers for this. So I have a LAMP stack. So I have a container running Apache Web Services and a second container running MySQL database services. So I'll show you how easy it is to get started at keeping track and monitor your containers using Nagios and Nagios plugin. So keep watching. We start out by having our server here that is running two containers. It's running a Docker engine, and these two containers are critical for either our developers or our clients or customers accessing it. One is offering web services. So it's a container running Apache web services. And the second one is running a container running MySQL services. So it's really our backend. It's a very basic LAMP configuration. But these are two mission critical containers that I want to monitor. You don't necessarily want to monitor maybe a developer's containers. You know, he's probably constantly deleting it, recreating it, probably just doing beta testing on it. So monitoring that, it wouldn't be useful. But to monitor a service, it's important. So I'm going to be using this plugin. It's called Check Docker. It's a shell script, and it's written in um, Bash shell. So you can actually go in there and modify if you're familiar with shell scripting. But it checks very basic things. It checks first you provide it the container name, then you provide a CPU utilization threshold, so critical versus warning. Same thing with memory and network bandwidth. And then you can check the, just the general status of your container, its health. So you want to make sure, one, your container is up, and two, the memory and CPU utilization is uh, within reason, right? With, that's not being over overutilized. If you want to take a look at it, it'll take you over to GitHub, and this is where you can download the plugin for free. Um, you can actually take a look at it before you download it, and then you go back and you can click on clone and download, and I like to download just a zip file. It's very easy. It downloads right to your downloads folder, and then you can just extract it. So you go to the downloads folder, you can just right click on it, extract it, and we're going to upload this to our Docker engine that's running our two containers. So the server that's running the containers, and this is considered going to be the Nagios client. Before I like going to the server, I like to make sure my plugin is working correctly on the command line. So once I copy it up to um, my uh, server running the Docker engine and containers, I'm going to run the command. I'm going to specify the minus n for the container name. The minus c is giving the critical and the warning thresholds for CPU utilization, and then also minus m for, um, again, the critical and warning for memory usage. So you can work with these numbers, see what works out for you. But it's kind of seeing where your usage is going. You know, how's your system performing? So if everything's performing well, it's great. So if this returns back to the OK status and everything's working, then you could actually go into the same server, the one running your containers, and we're going to create a command on here. We're going to define the command, and it's located under the slash user local not use. Then go into the etc folder, and then within there, there's a folder for the Nagios remote plugin executor. There's a file called commons.conf. Now this command, this file creates commands, local Nagios commands to run that the server will connect to under the, the name that you customize. So you create customized commands and um, testing with the different plugins you can download for free on Nagios Exchange. So I created one down here at the bottom. It's called check docker equals to Notice that same command I used on the command line, but instead of putting in the container name and the CPU utilization and the memory utilization and putting the argument, argument one, argument two, and argument three, and then on the server side, we're going to pass in arguments into those. So it makes this command a little bit more versatile. So it's not just checking a single container and I have to create one command per container. I could use the same command and just pass in different arguments for the different containers. So I might have obviously different container names, maybe different, you know, memory, CPU utilization, or um, network thresholds that I want to test for. Now we're going to go over to our Nagios server. So we were in our Nagios client that's running the Docker engine with our containers, and now we're going to the Nagios server that's going to monitor our containers on the Nagios client side. 
So we have the same command. If you look at it closely, it has the check docker and then the arguments. You notice I use the minus a and I have those three um, separated by a space. And those are the arguments, argument one, argument two, argument three that we just defined in our commons file. Now on the server side, we're gonna use this remote plugin, Nagios remote plugin executor, and we're providing the minus h and the IP address of the Nagios client. So this is gonna go to our Nagios client, look for the check docker command that we just defined on our Nagios client, pass in the arguments, the container name, and the different thresholds. And this is gonna test it to see if it's working correctly on the server side. So this is a great way of testing it before actually going into the web interface and the console and testing it there. I like to test it on the command line first. If it comes back with the okay status, then I know it's working. Now, now over to my Nagios web console, I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my Nagios admin account. And I'm going to go into configure core configuration manager. I want to create the command that I was just testing on the command line. So I'm going to create a brand new command and it's going to use the NRPE plugin to remotely connect to the command we defined on the client. I know it sounds a little confusing, but so we're going to name it. And for consistency sake, I like to name it the same thing, check Docker. Then we're going to pretty much provide the command we created on the command line just tested right before this. So we're doing the check NRPE minus host. Now we're going to pass in argument one here. Now this is a different argument one than on the client side. This is the argument one we're going to define here as the IP address. Then it's going to use the command check docker and that's the remote command on the client. And then we're going to do a minus A for arguments. And these are the arguments that we define on the client, argument one, two, and three for the container name, CPU utilization, and memory utilization. Now we're going to go down and use the check NRPE. So it's going to be using that command and we're going to go ahead and save. So once you do that, you have to apply the configuration. If there's any reason the configuration fails, there's snapshots, you can go back at any time and go back to a clean state or a working state of your configuration file, so that's really great. Now I'm gonna go into service management and I'm gonna create it and create the service and the service is gonna use the command to check the client. So I like to name my client, my configuration name after the IP address. So that's pretty common and I'm gonna use I use a description and this description is going to appear on the web console under the service description. So you might want to make sure it, it appears as you want it and it's kind of consistent for appearance sake, kind of consistent how it looks with the rest of them. So you notice I put argument one and argument two here. Argument one is the host name or IP address of the server running the containers. So in this case, it's the Nagios client. Now notice here argument two here is consistent with argument one, two, and three on the Nagios client or the server running the Docker engine. So we wanna fill in it, fill it in and then separate our arguments by space. So argument one is the container name, argument two, right, CPU thresholds here, and then the third one, space, and then the third one's the network. So that's how we defined it on the client side when we created the command in the common.config file. So once we have everything tested, we wanna go ahead and save it um, and also we want to create, you're not quite done here. So after you do that, you want to make sure you go in and associate it with a host. So I associate it with my host that's 10.0.1.72. I'm going to go in and set the configuration for um, how often it should check, how, how many minutes between intervals of checking, and how many attempts before it's considered failed, and when should it notify you. So if these are kind of mission critical containers, you want to be sure your page, your email, that something has happened either overutilization of the processor or your status is down. So let's go ahead and save it and we're gonna apply our configuration. Hopefully everything works out. Great, so now we can go and check out our host. Listed under now the services, we have check Docker and the container name um, just to distinguish it and just say what this uh, check Docker is checking for specifically, right? You wanna know which container it's checking for. So here I could force immediate check. So it's gonna run that command we just defined with the IP address and the arguments. And now if everything works back, it's, we get okay status. So that's what we're looking for. It gives us a little summary of our, similar to the output we saw on the command, memory and CPU utilization, a little summary there. So now we're all ready. So I didn't like the name when I did this. So again, you can go back and change 
your commands at any time. If you want to change the thresholds, if you want to change the um, container name, for example, you can go back at any time and go into configure and then we could go in and change the service management and what we're passing, like the container name or the thresholds or just the wording so it appears consistent with the other descriptions on the same page. Again, we save, we'll apply configuration. And now if we go back and check out our services for that host, we'll see that now the text has changed and it looks similar to what we had with the other services running. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Keep track of your containers. So, so important. Otherwise, leave comments and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.